Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and once again, we have Michael Brave Hawk Jensen, Brave Jayhawk Jensen, uh, in the uh, in the in the room, and we're going to be reviewing uh, Survivor Pool Week Four, and then we're going to be going ahead with looking at Weeks Five and and beyond. Um, so, as usual, we're going to first review what we uh, what we did last week. Um, to, to, for those of you that have not been paying attention throughout the other weeks. Uh, Mike uh, was aggressive in the first couple of weeks and was down from like 7 billion entries to three. Um, but he uh, has been surviving the last couple of weeks um, and uh, we'll see how he's doing. We have um, four entries uh, still in Circa among other things. And uh, so this is what we did. So last week we uh, took a different route. Instead of going, you know, San Francisco across the board, we uh, we spread around a little bit. We uh, we played one San Francisco, we played one Chargers, we played one Jacksonville, and we played one um, boy. Who the hell else did we played? One Minnesota action. We just spread around. We wanted to create a couple of different paths, a couple of different trees. We wanted some San Francisco's for the future, and we got very lucky in that all four of them won. Now, basically, everybody won the whole week with the exception of two kind of tilting ones, like Kansas City and Philadelphia just kind of hung on, and we had zero of them. Um, and it uh, would have been nice to have one of those get knocked out. But it was really important that, I mean, when all, four, when all four teams win, when you spread risk, it's really good because now you have four. It's very hard to have four teams win. Let's put it that way. It's easier for San Francisco I, I, to win than have four teams win. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people forget, even though no one got knocked out, you can still win based on which teams you advance through well, with. Well, that's what happens. So what happens is that people gained and lost equity, but it's kind of harder to see. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so that that's that's what we we ended up doing pretty much across the board. Um, and uh, there was no real sweats in our games, honestly um more sweats like anti-sweating the other the other team so why don't we first go over what you did last week and then we will uh we'll move on two entry two entries remaining from 66 uh took both on san francisco so didn't change the strategy that we had after week two which was to go kansas city in three san francisco in four and here we are in five the one thing that i i, I did not do uh, not that I couldn't talk him into it, whether, whether I did not, I wanted to maybe try a little Denver. And obviously that would have been quite the, quite the miracle if, uh, if that actually worked out, um, if we actually played them, I don't know. If, I don't know if it would have been worth the equity as the, as a, as a, um, as a, 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 um, as a swap for some blood pressure rising, you know? So I, I maybe, maybe it was better off. I didn't know. I definitely understand that. Yeah. So Okay, so here we are in week number, uh, week number five, and here's a couple of things I, I want to alert you guys to. So I'm in one pool that has doubles, and this week is a double pick week, uh, and it's double picks this week, and then singles six, seven, and eight, and then doubles the rest of the season. Okay, that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, so let's take a look, and I'm ranking these by by. EV, which is Survivor Grid's uh, calculation. And what, what that's doing is it's taken into account both win percentage and popularity. And one thing that you'll notice, and we talked about this a little bit, is that as you get later into the season, you have these teams that have extraordinarily high, what they call immediate EV, because you have teams that are, you have good win percentages, and yet, no, and, and yet nobody's playing them. Now, keep in mind that part of the reason nobody plays teams is because they don't have them anymore, okay? And, and and part of them is because they're such obvious saves that nobody's going to play them, all right? So it's not like, oh, my God, uh, uh, come join my podcast so I can tell you, oh, look at Buffalo. Let's go play Buffalo. Let's go play Philadelphia. They're 0.6% owned, you know? Okay, great, but do you have them available? And if even if you do, is it worth you, you you're using them now? So nonetheless, um, let's talk about – now, again, one thing you'll notice, and we'll get to this, is the two highest favored teams are not in the top EV teams because of their popularity. You see Miami and Detroit, they're both huge favorites, but they're both 40% pick, right? So why don't we, you know, let's let's talk about those first. Oh, there's my cat. 
Oh, Barrett. Oh, look at that. Barrett, let's talk about those first. What do you think of, of, of the two you know, teams most likely to win, Detroit and Miami? This is a week we got. you have to start by eliminating, I think, the teams that you just absolutely cannot take, not just because you've used them already, but like you said, teams that you need to save for other weeks, whether it's immediately in the future, next week or the, or the following, or in the middle or end stages of the game. And I, the reason I, I, I feel that way for this is there's a very obvious chunk of teams that yes. they're, the, they're the cream of the crop of the league, and you're just not going to use these teams as a three- or four-point favorite. So I think it helps in the process of making your decision to bring a group down from, you know, maybe 10 teams down to, well, I have three teams. But I think most people are going to agree that Philadelphia, Baltimore, San Francisco are absolutely unplayable this week. Three or four point favorites. It's some of their worst games of the entire year. Obvious weeks that you need those teams for if you still have them. And the next group within that group is Buffalo and Kansas City. I also think they are absolutely unplayable, both of them. They are slightly higher favored than that first group mentioned, but teams that, well, next week, for example, they're the two highest favorites on the slate in six. So I think you have to start with deciding which, which teams am I, am I absolutely never going to take and then see what's left over. Okay, so I, I've done everybody the favor of, of uh, cutting through it and crossing out those top five, those five teams that he mentioned. I, I assume you. More, I assume you more or less agree. Oh, that's what I'm that. saying. I'm, I'm, full, I'm in full agreement with that. This, and, this, and, I, and I also have Cincinnati on that list as well. Well, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we'll we'll talk about that in a second. Okay. Yeah. Um, I definitely think that Cincinnati is the the least of the possibles. I guess. Um, well, let's well, you know let's eliminate, eliminate Cincinnati first by doing this. Let me let me just put it another way. So. <laughs> Cincinnati on its face is a team that you don't want to play now because you see that there are places you can play them like in week 10 in week 12 in week uh, among, among other places like in week 14. Um, the only thing I look at is if they're since no one has played them and I presume no one's playing this week like how popular they're going to be in week 10. Um, so that's the only thing I think about is whether if I'm going to really save them is whether I'm really going to play them in 10. Like I'll probably end up fading them in 10. So, and in 12, yeah, you know what? I guess between 10, 12 and 14, I'll probably have a, I'll have a better reason to play them then. Let's put it this way than now. Okay, so it's yeah. week week twelve is the week because there's a there's a group of three teams that everybody's going to have, Minnesota, Tennessee, and Cincinnati, are teams that everyone's going to have in twelve, and it's their best game for all three of them for the entire season as of this point. So that will help really bring their ownership down, and that doesn't even that's not even considering that Dallas and Kansas City are the highest or the are the largest favorites in 12 and there's other teams too like detroit in miami okay so it looks as though i mean what this is coming down to is there are two teams that are very very likely to win um that you could play maybe miami or detroit and you could play them in the future as well then there's uh and we'll talk about washington in a second which uh again it's really funny because when we were everybody was jamming washington in week for in week one and we talked about this last week, right? Oh, yeah. That, that, oh, this is like a lock play because you're never going to use them in the future, right? And next thing you know, here we are. Right? Like, yeah, this, this, <laughs> this, is pretty, this is pretty remarkable. Last yeah. week I said I didn't mind taking a chalky team like Washington week one because it's a team that you're not very likely to need. And then one week later, Washington's the clear best pick. Yep. on the slate I, I, and I, I, could, I couldn't even see that last you know just just last week so yeah. it, it, it does change very quickly so okay so what do you think of Miami and Detroit the first thing I, I want everyone to visualize 
my uh, Detroit and Miami's outlook the rest of the way. If you can uh, refresh the page and sort by largest favorite, and that'll put Miami and Detroit on the top two uh, uh, rows, excuse me. Their schedule is fascinating. It's basically identical. They are unplayable in seven, nine, and 10. Those are the only weeks they're unplayable. They have, they, they're marginally playable in 12 and 13. 14, it gets better. 15, it's better. Their best weeks are 11 and five. They have identical, they may as well be the same team in terms of uh, win percentage for the rest of their season at this point right now. So they're very interchangeable. You don't need to have one over the other when it comes to saving them for a different slot because they're just as good as, as the other is for each week. Or there's one, there's the only difference, I would say. Is next week. That's yeah, it. is next week. Is and next. That's the, that, is the, that is the only difference. But if you have Buffalo or Kansas City, there's three clear – teams not to mention the the rams will be pretty popular next week too yeah so it's tough if you took washington in week one i'm not going to say anything wrong i said that if they were 10 and a half 11 point favorites i would have smashed them in week one myself I, i do remember saying that i got lucky with with my atlanta week one picks that i'm in a great spot i'm clearly taking washington for my last two entries there's no reason to get to this point and not say both of my Miami and Detroit, but most people just aren't in that, that situation. Yeah. I agree. T- I, I agree with that. You know, like um, if you've took Washington already, then it's actually a, a, if you didn't take Washington, I really don't think it's much of a decision. You know what I mean? Like, I think you just take them like you were saying. Yes. Um, I, I, and I don't think the pick percent, I don't think the pick availability matters at all, especially for a regular pool. Now in Circa, Washington is going to be the highest percentage probably of a team so far this year. And the highest percentage so far is at least 41%. So, well, if it's even possible, I, I, I might take Washington and Circa, even if I knew every single person was taking them. Like it, it's to that extreme because saving Miami and Detroit is so important. And the, the next option, at least for me, would be Denver. So I'd be dropping down to a team that's more or less 50-50 and, and getting off a team that's 70%. I, I would rather just eat the chalk and take the 70% team. I would have to say, now, I have to say, I have to say by the way, before we move forward, we'll talk about the percentages stuff. I, I, you know, for those of you have been following, not only did I did we advance the survivor, but but I I, I want I want a side bet. Oh, my, that was even that was even close. I went a side bet against my partner, where um, where I I where I, I thought that uh, I took San Francisco's ownership and I gave twenty percentage points to uh, to the Chargers, and uh, and then he started to whine when when Minnesota started to get some steam. You know, they're going to take from the Chargers, and I'm like, I'll tell you, I, I was almost going to offer him Minnesota and San Diego combined. I yeah. mean, Chargers combined, but I didn't do that because why bother? I had I had I had a block. And uh, they really, and even though like San Francisco is playable in like, you know, in, 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 in scarce weeks like Christmas and Thanksgiving, they jammed them, man. They they jammed yeah. them right. And and you know what? I, not that I it just cr- it crossed that th- it just crossed that threshold. You're yeah. that big of a favorite. It, yeah. And, I mean, if if I if I fall into that, you want to call it trap? A lot of people are because I played well, that, well, very, that, well, very that, aggressive. Well, that was my logic. You know, I was talking it through with them, and I said, "Listen, I'm looking at this board, and I'm like, I don't really need to play San Francisco in the future, and they're a hundred point favorite. I want to jam them, and believe me, if I want to jam them, then other people are going to want to jam them, yeah. and that's the way it is. I I sort of disagree with you with respect to the Washington ownership this week on certain. I think they're going to be popular. But I don't. I I think that because Miami and Detroit are pretty interchangeable, um, I think they're going to get more ownership than you might think. I, I think that I think that you could play Miami, and still, you know what I mean, and then have many other options in in the Miami weeks. You could that, play that's, Detroit that, and, and many other options in the Detroit weeks. I'm that's pretty- true, but being that they're so interchangeable, it makes. 
I think that it makes it more important to really find the right spot for each team because once you use one of them, you lose a pick on every single week that oh, yeah. that, team, that other so, team could be used. So, so this is what I now, I, I I looked at San Francisco. Washington is right now sixty percent available in certain. Okay, um, sixty okay. percent. So I just figured that fifty percent of those people would use them. You know, I I, I so I put them at thirty percent. That that's my estimate. Now again, I don't really care either. You know what I mean? Like if they're thirty or forty or fifty. You know what I mean? Like the way that the mapping works. And I I I want Detroit Miami for the future. I I want it. And yeah. And I, and I guess now that you're now that you're now that I'm talking through it. If I really want it, then other people really want it. And, and, uh, and, uh, but, but then again, you think about this, like if you're the type of player that wouldn't play Washington in week one, are you the type of player that would play Washington now? I mean, it seems like the same type of play now as it was in week one. And the- no, it's different because at least for me in week one, I assume anything can happen. Okay. Okay. The, the Rams won the Super Bowl in 1999. There were, 400, 500, 601 odds. Kurt right. Warner came out of nowhere, one of, ended up being one of the best teams ever. I assume that anything like that is possible. Okay. But once you get to week five, you know who sucks. You know, Chicago's not going to win out. But at the beginning of the season, they could go. And even in my mind, they have a non-zero out of a million chance of, of, of going undefeated. Right. Now it's very clear that they're, that, that they're atrocious. Yeah. And you, you know exactly what – there's no mystery. You know what you're getting. It's not as, you know, now I'm hoping that, you know, I'm hoping that the odds work in my, uh, I hope that, I just hope a team loses if, you know, if I don't, if I don't pick them, I hope a team wins, but, now, but, but we won anything could happen. But, but, could now, be wrong. but now, now the fun picks. Okay. Um, well, well, but, but wait, in Circa though, Circa, this is where even in a regular pool, I really did not like Miami last week or the week before, whatever it was, because of this Detroit Miami overlap. I it's it's a lot clearer now, but I saw the importance of Miami and I mentioned it where when you look at some of these weeks there's a lot of choices but the same three there's a group of four teams that keep replicating across these weeks. So yeah, there's a lot of choices but once you use one of those, those break choices for that week is lessened. And then when you use two of them, now now all of a sudden you have one left. And my, Miami, Detroit, what is it, it's very clear now. If you have Washington available, you have to take them. You, you just do. If you're in Circa, this is where it gets you know it, it, this is where it gets it gets interesting because Detroit plays on Thanksgiving and they're going to be the second uh, the second most picked team after you don't know Dallas. about see that's are you sure about that you know like well, that's I, I, I'm, a, I'm a, well i'm assuming that, you because know, there, you there have be you, listen you remember you have four teams that that could go a lot of different ways as far as the spread goes so you have dallas who's going to be they could still be seven over washington it's a it's 11 right now oh it's 11 i mean so yeah. dallas who could be 11 Miami over the Jets could be anything. You know what I mean? I don't know what that could be. That could be anywhere. If the Jets actually improve. Oh, my, oh Miami is the other. Uh... Yeah, that's Black Friday. <laughs> Sorry, I can't. Oh, that's the Black Friday game. Okay. I mean, even though that's um, at New York, I mean, it depends yeah. which way it goes. You know, like if the Jets continue to improve, that could be four and a half. Or well, even well, even even more so than I, I would rather have Miami past Black Friday. I I forgot that was on that slate. Yeah. I'd rather have Miami for fourteen or fifteen, and and, and again play very aggressively for, uh, for that specific format of course on my sheet right here i have miami 411 but when you're playing uh, the more people you're playing against the longer you hold on to miami the more ev you're going to have when you drop them yeah um but my, taking miami last week really put people in a pinch even with a lot of selections on thanksgiving day slate for circa players those are still very important teams that you need in the prior weeks and the latter weeks from Thanksgiving slate. So you would like drop play Washington, regardless of what the pool is, regardless of the pick percentage and between Miami, Detroit, man, that that's really tough. I, I, agree. I think I would favor Detroit, I guess, uh, specifically because of next week, if you've already used Buffalo, I definitely like taking Detroit be- just because of next week that you could take Miami. So let's uh, let's talk about the the the, the two fun plays. Okay, um, so there's Atlanta and there's Denver. Okay, on my board, and, and those those are those are the drops mm-hmm. as far as, in, my, in my opinion. 
I agree. I agree. And and I will tell you this is that, and I'm going to throw like Indianapolis in there just for, just just for fun. And the reason I yeah you can def- yeah you can definitely do that. I put that one in there because I want to go back to the idea that I'm in this pool that has double picks this week. Yeah. If, my, if somehow Miami and or Detroit loses this week, that pool is crushed. Okay, because those two teams are going to be like like billions, billions of percent owned. Um, yes. And so I'm I'm looking for for some for some crap and and, and Atlanta. Do you have was, Washington? How, how available do you have Washington in that pool? Yeah, that's the only problem is Washington could end up really chalky there as well. Um, well, no, do you do you have them available? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, I I would personally box Washington across all your entries with that with that list of three teams that you mentioned yeah I'm, 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 that's that's kind of that's kind of the plan uh washington with atlanta denver indianapolis that, that that's definitely kind of the plan um and and the only question in my head is whether it's worth well okay so let, let's 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 put in two categories if you already used washington question one right that's one a yeah. Use question already is it worth for going detroit miami and playing stuff like denver and atlanta okay and and then like then then choice one b even if you have washington available is it worth you dropping? <laughs> probably not um but let's just say that you that you that you've already burned washington and your choice is between detroit miami and x okay yeah you think it's worth i guess depending on pool i suppose dropping i know what i would do x. Are we are we talking your double picks one? Because I know what I do for your your double picks. The double pick one for sure would drop down. But but I actually wouldn't. If if you do not have Washington, I would actually take. I would take the chalk. And I would go four to nine and fade New Orleans, Cleveland completely. Oh, that's another one. You know, that that's going to be the end of the pool of that week when those two teams lose. And I'd ra- really I, I, I would I would rather wait for that. The spreads are currently better. And if you look at it, it's a similar makeup for what you're going to end up picking between. Yeah, Baltimore is the third biggest favorite. At, at a, we're looking at week nine and, and Eric's double picks. Who, in, who's, uh, who's, who's got who's got Baltimore available? Uh, well, I, I would. Oh, uh, I don't. <laughs> with, with, with very little. Well, that's good. That's good, though. Yeah. That means look, look how far you're dropping, because when you have this scenario for double picks, you have two teams at the top and then you, the larger the gap is. Oh, the more, the, the more, the more you should just go for it. You should. You, we, we're going to laugh at the people that take Kansas City and the Chargers, and we're just going to take the two and three point favorites. We're going to hope they both win, and we're going to hope at least one in New Orleans or Cleveland loses. Oh, if they what? both lose, you get the fourteen parlay, and ninety five percent of people get knocked out. Especially if like one other. Oh, you can play loses. Vegas in nine if you want. Lots of lots of choices. So in your in your situation, I would actually take the two biggest favorites this week because yeah. only because it's doubles every single week if it's not doubles every not week until I would nine, want, but yeah but five well, but but every week after you don't need in that format you don't detroit and miami aren't as valuable because the strength of having those teams is having them in 11 through 15 but when you're doubling in five nine and ten the chances of it going to 12, 13, 14, 15 is lessened, especially when we have two weeks we've already talked about, five and nine, where two teams are going to be picked at 75% plus. Yeah. And one of those four teams is going to lose. One of them just is. So 75% of the pool is guaranteed to be knocked out with one loss out of four right. games. And that's going to happen. So – I I would play Miami and Detroit this week and just hope that they both don't lose and then your other teams would have won. Because that, that 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 would that would be unfortunate. But now there's, 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 higher- there's another thing that I could do in this pool, by the way. Um, and this is not, you know, is 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 to save Detroit, Miami, and and we have Philly available. Now, now, keep something in mind. I'm sorry. You can also save Detroit and Miami and hope it goes to Week 11 because that would be a huge advantage to have them. And so I'm going both ways here, but because there are both, there are multiple options. Well, well, well the having, other two, okay. having Detroit and Miami and saving them for 11 in the in his double picks pool is another good strategy. There are a lot of favorites that week, but they're teams that 
people won't have. They're not going to have San Francisco, a lot of San Francisco. They're not going to have a lot of Buffalo or Dallas. So the next tier after that is Cleveland at a six point favorite and down. So you have three, I think you have three choice. You have three choices. You can you make your move in five, nine, or eleven. And you really, I don't think, I don't think either of the ways is wrong. It's, it's just whether or not you want to get it over with, but the least likely scenario is Detroit and Miami losing. That's, that's, that's the least likely scenario. This is the one other uh, who do in that, in that situation is Philly this week. Because Philly, you, yes, in, in every other pool, you're going to want them in 16 and 17. But this, yeah, not in this, is, not in this one. This pool this is rough one. to get to that. To get, it usually gets there, but it's always a struggle. You know what I mean? Like it's a, uh, you know, they're already down to only, I think, two thousand people or something like that. <laughs> um, but 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 two thousand people goes really fast with multiple weeks of doubles. Oh, I mean, th- there's going to be multiple seventy five percent teams losing in mm-hmm. in that pool the, the, uh, this year. So yeah, I, I would, I don't mind dropping Philadelphia at all, and yeah, and because. I, I, would, I personally would not have thought of that for this format. I think it's better to use them now than 11, because I think 11, they're just going to be – no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's eight? Play them in six. Also. No, you don't need them in eight. Yeah, I, I, think, I think Philadelphia is a good pick for, yeah. for that format. And, again, they got, guys, this is, this is – he has doubles in five and then starting in nine, yeah. week nine for the rest of the season. So yeah. we don't need Philadelphia for 16, 17, 18 nearly as often probably maybe not at all i i i I would be willing to bet that it's over before 16 yeah that's what we're that's well that's what we're betting on if we play philly that's yes yeah um okay so um uh that's pretty much all all i have um and uh i guess that's pretty much it we can i'm not dropping anything further there's no reason to force stuff that doesn't exist um, yeah, I have, I have a couple. I have a couple more notes. Sure, go uh, for it. One of them's don't forget about Baltimore if you have not used them yet. I had the. I did a full mapping through week seventeen. It's my first map since the season started, and I actually didn't find a lot of placement for Baltimore with my strategy. My strategy is if there's a team that can be used, that's going to be used four times, I would like to use them in the fourth game, and I actually found that for but five different teams using them last. And then, you know, they're the biggest favorite that week. Teams like Dallas, Detroit, Philadelphia type teams. Another one is, you know, last week we, we, we talked about if you're between Pittsburgh and Denver, you should take Denver because Pittsburgh is more usable. And again, one week later, it's the exact opposite. You don't need Pittsburgh at all. And Denver pops up twice. Um, you know, as a team last week and then as a, as a possibility for this week. So things do change quickly, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't look and, and try to find the differences between those teams. Luckily, this week, if you're going to drop, I, I don't see a problem with, with any of these teams. You're, it's it's going to be a matter of luck determining if you would have actually needed to use Denver or – I mean, Atlanta, I guess I would definitely take Denver over Atlanta. And he said the other one's Indy, right? Yeah. I would take Atlanta last. Um, they look terrible. But, there's, again, their schedule, week 14 onward, is much more attractive than Denver's and Indianapolis's. Indianapolis isn't that, actually that bad. But I, I have to assume that Atlanta's the better team, even though they look like trash. I encourage everybody to keep posting in the Discord. And uh... – I'll be curious what we end up doing in the double pick pools and what what ends up happening. Over yeah, that, yeah, that's that's a that's a fun spot with that many cho- uh, uh, viable choices. Yeah. All right, good luck, everybody. Bye bye.